Recently, China's tech sector made headlines again for the wrong reason. According to several market intelligence firms, a deep ultraviolet lithography machine, or DUV, a critical piece of equipment used in chip manufacturing, suddenly broke down at a semiconductor plant in China. Because the machine is extremely expensive and considered the heart of the production line, Chinese engineers urgently contacted the Dutch supplier ASML, asking them to send a technical team for on-site repair. But what happened next caught everyone by surprise. When the ASML engineers arrived, they discovered the machine, worth more than 100 million yuan, hadn't failed due to aging or misuse. It had been taken apart by the Chinese engineers themselves. A WeChat account called Ji Dao reported on October 20th that when ASML engineers examined the equipment, they found it severely damaged. Key modules were misaligned, lenses were scratched, the vacuum chamber was leaking, and some sensors were burned out because of faulty wiring. The report said lithography machines are extremely complex, made up of thousands of precision parts. Some core components are black box designs that permanently lock or destroy themselves if disassembled without authorization, making them nearly impossible to fix. Geopolitical analyst Brandon Waitchert commented that this incident reveals China's ambition to break through Western technology restrictions by attempting to reverse engineer. But the effort ended in complete failure. He went on to explain that Chinese engineers took the risk of dismantling an older DUV lithography machine because they were desperate to overcome U.S. sanctions and the ongoing technology blockade. Unable to purchase the newest models, they tried to study the machine's inner workings, but the experiment turned into what he called a self-destructive failure. He said that though it's unknown whether ASML ever completed the repairs, it's unlikely that the Dutch company will honor a maintenance contract when the customer has tampered with the machine. China is now facing increasingly strict export controls on DUV lithography systems. Since September 2023, the Dutch government has required ASML to apply for special licenses to export certain immersion-type DUV machines to China. In 2024, the restrictions expanded even further. More importantly, the new rules not only limit the export of entire machines, but also cover maintenance, technical support, and the replacement of key components. This means that even if the machines are already inside China, future repairs could be blocked. This move is essentially an extension of the U.S.-led semiconductor export control framework. The U.S. and its allies have long banned the export of the most advanced EUV lithography machines to China. Now even DUV models are gradually being restricted, creating what analysts call a full-spectrum blockade from high-end to mid-range technology. On October 23rd, according to one U.S. official and three people familiar with the matter, the Trump administration is considering a new export control measure, targeting a wide range of software-driven products headed to China. From laptops to jet engines, all are potentially included in the next round of restrictions. According to Reuters, while this plan is not the only option, it would effectively fulfill the warning Trump issued on October 10th to restrict the export of critical software to China by limiting the export of products containing U.S. software or those produced using U.S. software. On October 22nd, when asked by reporters whether the U.S. was considering software export restrictions to China, Treasury Secretary Scott Besant confirmed that all options are on the table. In the interview, Besant also mentioned that China had recently imposed export controls on rare earths, not only on the U.S., but on the entire world. Therefore, if the U.S. were to take export restriction measures against China, whether related to software, engines, or other critical areas, it would likely be coordinated with G7 partners. On October 9th, the Chinese Ministry of Commerce announced plans to expand rare earth export control. This immediately triggered strong backlash from the U.S. and European countries. The next day, October 10th, President Trump responded on his social media platform, stating that the U.S. would impose 100% tariffs on Chinese goods and implement export controls on so-called critical software, with plans to begin enforcement on November 1st. Although some insiders believe this measure may not actually be implemented, the Trump administration's suggestion has sent a clear signal. The U.S. views Beijing's actions as weaponizing resources and an attempt to gain leverage in the U.S.-China tech standoff. Washington is seriously considering whether to confront China more directly. Under U.S. pressure, ASML has been prohibited from selling the most advanced EUV lithography machines to China, with restrictions on deep ultraviolet equipment, or DUV, also tightening. With rising tensions, China DUV systems may soon face the risk of a supply cut. Brandon Waitchert stated that Beijing is becoming increasingly desperate as its economy slows, and this signifies that the Chinese government is encountering unexpected obstacles. Since the coronavirus outbreak, Xi Jinping's regime has remained fragile. Waitchert also noted, 
that the damage caused by tech restrictions is greater than initially anticipated, and all of this suggests that if China cannot control the economic or technological sectors, it may seek to impose control in the military domain. Of imitating and stealing technology is well known, which is why Western countries remain highly cautious and protective when dealing with China's technological development. Over the past two decades, various methods have been exposed. Ranging from cyber attacks and corporate espionage to forced technology transfers in joint ventures, this behavior has not only made many countries cautious, but also directly led the U.S. and its allies to establish stricter export control systems. One of the most representative cases is the development of China's domestically produced C919 aircraft. On the surface, it appears to be a self-developed national industry project, but multiple international security reports indicate serious concerns about technology theft. Several Western suppliers of components for the C919, including engine manufacturers and electronic control system suppliers, were targeted by cyber attacks from China during the development phase. The hacker group called Turbine Panda has been linked to Chinese national security agencies and specializes in infiltrating the servers of companies in the aerospace manufacturing sector. Their goal is to steal sensitive materials such as turbine blade designs, engine control software, and process flow documents. Investigators believe these materials were later used to improve the C919 engine's control system, allowing China to bypass some of the core technology barriers that have long been restricted. This incident represents more than just hardware theft; it's a systemic replication of the entire engineering ecosystem. Another significant case that shook Silicon Valley involved the leak of core artificial intelligence algorithms. In 2024, the U.S. Department of Justice former Google engineer Ling Weiding, accusing him of secretly transferring company internal materials to his personal accounts while also working part time for a Chinese AI company. According to the indictment, Ling Weiding. Downloaded more than 1,000 files over several months, including AI model architectures, chip computing frameworks, and server control programs, all key technologies that support Google's AI ecosystem. Prosecutors noted that his actions not only threatened America's leadership in AI, but also gave Chinese companies direct access to the world's most advanced algorithms and system designs. In other words, this was a classic case of software-driven technology theft. The stolen materials were not physical chips, but the soul of the entire intelligent system. This is why the U.S. and its allies continue to escalate export controls, placing products containing U.S. software or produced using U.S. software on the restricted lists. Ironically, China's Ministry of Commerce has repeatedly expressed dissatisfaction with other countries' export controls. They criticized the Dutch government's decision as disrupting Sino-Dutch cooperation and the stability of global supply chains. They call for respect and normal trade relations between companies. However, when China imposed its own export restrictions on rare earths and critical minerals, it defended these actions as necessary measures to safeguard national security. This hypocritical stance has become clear to the international community. A commentator on WeChat also pointed out: given the current situation, even if Chinese tech companies choose the imitation route, it's unlikely they will achieve their desired goals. The article notes that reverse engineering involves dismantling, analyzing, and replicating mature products to understand their internal structure, functional principles, and manufacturing processes. It is often seen as a shortcut for technological breakthroughs, but in some ways, it's also a denial of one's own innovation capacity. Because when you can only dismantle others' achievements, you're already at the starting point of imitation. In 1993. Engineers at Shenyang Machine Tool Factory dismantled a German DMG five-axis machine and found a telling inscription on the spindle bearing: "Measuring is destruction." Initially, the engineers did not understand its meaning. However, after they followed their plan and measured, then reassembled the machine, its precision dropped by 30 percent. This was not a coincidence, but a deliberate anti-reverse engineering mechanism set by the German manufacturer. Once the parts were measured or disassembled without authorization, the key internal components would automatically misline or lock, rendering the machine incapable of restoring its original performance. Japan's Mazak uses a similar defense strategy. Its high-end machine tools are equipped with anti-tamper electronic fences. If the machine detects excessive vibration, or if key components are displaced by more than 10 centimeters, the system automatically locks or even scraps the equipment. In other words, even if the machine is dismantled, only the external appearance can be studied, while the core technology remains encrypted and inaccessible. A troubling example involves a Chinese company attempting to replicate a German high-precision ball screw. A ball screw is a critical transmission component in machine tools, automation equipment, and CNC systems, converting rotary motion into precise linear motion.
The term German high precision ball screw refers to top tier products made by German manufacturers, who are known for their extremely high precision and rigorous machining processes. Although the Chinese company's imitation of the German ball screw achieved an impressive measurement accuracy of 0.001 millimeters, the lifespan of the assembled product was only one tenth of the original. Later, it was discovered that the German manufacturer added a trace of yttrium, only one one millionth of a percent, which boosted the rare resistance of the steel by 300 percent. This hidden knowledge in the material mix could not be fully replicated using a spectrometer. This illustrates that real technological barriers are often hidden in subtle details that are hard to see and harder to touch. Meanwhile, Japan's Fanuc has an industrial art level quenching process for its guide rails. Guide rails are core components in machine tools or automation equipment. They carry the slide table and slide blocks in linear motion. Their precision, wear resistance, and stability directly affect the processing quality and lifespan of the entire machine. The quenching process is a key step in metal heat treatment, heating steel to an austenitizing temperature, holding it, and then rapidly cooling it to form a martensitic or binitic structure. This offers high hardness, strength, and wear resistance. Fanuc guide rails undergo alternating deep cryogenic treatment in liquid nitrogen at negative 196 degrees Celsius and high temperature tempering at 510 degrees Celsius, repeating the cycle seven times. Some Chinese companies, trying to save costs, skipped one of the tempering steps, resulting in a scrap rate five times higher than Japan's. Swiss company GF Aji Charmille even lets its cast iron beds air dry outdoors for three years to naturally release residual stresses. In contrast, Chinese imitation factories use high temperature baking to speed up the process, which leads to a 0.05 millimeter deformation in the rails after just six months. The machine becomes scrap within half a year. The quality gap is self-evident. Because of this, many Chinese companies prefer to import high-priced equipment rather than purchase local imitations. This is not about worshiping foreign brands, but a practical assessment of reliability and precision. While domestic equipment is cheaper, the costs are higher. Frequent maintenance, short lifespan, and poor stability. Ironically, faced with internal demands and external pressures, the Chinese government has publicly claimed that it will soon make breakthroughs in DUV technology. In recent years, several Chinese research institutions and media have announced major breakthroughs in domestic DUV lithography machines. For example, the Chinese Academy of Sciences has publicly stated that it has developed an, a 193 nanometer solid-state DUV laser light source prototype. The device can generate 193 nanometer wavelength light, but its output power is only 70 megawatts, far below that of international systems. There's also been promotion that Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment, a core Chinese company in the field, has developed a new generation of DUV machines that use a 193 nanometer ARF laser light source. Officials claim that the machine's resolution reaches 65 nanometers, and overlay accuracy is controlled within 8 nanometers. It is said that this device has already been trial produced at some wafer labs. However, the industry widely believes that these achievements still fall far behind the technological standards of international leaders like ASML. Several research institutes have pointed out that while China's domestic DUV lithography machines can reach a functional state, they still lag far behind ASML's immersion DUV systems in key metrics such as exposure accuracy. Stability, yield control, and continuous operational lifespan. More critically, the core components of the lithography machines, such as key precision lenses, light source control systems, and optical algorithms, still remain heavily reliant on imports. This means that China is unable to achieve fully independent production. In semiconductor manufacturing, DUV lithography machines are considered the crown jewels of modern industry. They integrate cutting-edge technologies in optics, materials, controls, vacuum systems, and quantum physics, making them one of the most complex industrial systems created by humans. For example, the EUV lithography machine from Dutch company ASML consists of around 450,000 parts, weighs 180 tons, and requires thousands of engineers months to assemble. If any part of the process goes wrong, the entire system fails, illustrating the high technological barrier involved. Moreover, the next generation of DUV, the EUV lithography machine, has an even more internationalized supply chain. The light source provided by U.S.-based Symer. The mirrors are made by Germany's Zeiss, and the key optical materials and chemicals are controlled by companies in Japan and Switzerland. Even if China could assemble the whole machine, it would still face significant challenges in securing a stable supply of these core components. Under strict export controls, this dependency has become an insurmountable technological bottleneck. More importantly, the lithography machine is only one part of the semiconductor ecosystem. 
Without high-end photo resists, masks, EDA design tools, and process verification systems, even the most advanced machines can't achieve true mass production. Currently, China still has significant shortcomings in these supporting areas. ASML has been developing lithography technology since the 1980s and spent more than 20 years before successfully achieving mass production of DUV equipment. It then took nearly 30 more years to bring the even more advanced EUV technology to market in 2019. Even if China pushes full speed ahead, and even though it may not be starting from zero, achieving stable mass production and building an independent, controllable technological system will still require at least a decade. Thus, it is unrealistic for China to invent and mass produce a replacement lithography machine in the short term. The problem is not funding, but the fact that a complete technological ecosystem has not yet been established. The breakthrough in lithography is not simply a race of technologies, but a long and complex systemic national project. Therefore, foreign media and analysts generally believe that the Chinese government's so-called DUV breakthrough is more like an exaggerated publicity stunt. The claim that the machine supports 8 nanometer processes is technically not entirely false, but represents a theoretical value. Being able to expose that line width does not mean that it can maintain high yield and consistency in mass production. In other words, China's lithography machines may be made, but they're still a long way from commercializing them.